few months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. These stories are great, and so many of them are set in Satakori, which I think the next one is. So what's the next story? Uh, this story is uh, roughly the, the history of the Satakori Bridge. Uh, as you know, at the turn, of, the turn of the century, 1900, there were no paved roads in, in Ventura or Satakoy, and there was no bridge. So any, any produce or any kind of farm implements would coming across the river had, had to brave the river. And during the floods, it was impossible to cross, even several weeks, sometimes months after the rains would come. So um, Satakoy was a growing agricultural business center. It had, uh, it had banks, it had blacksmith shops, it had harness shops, it had grocery stores. Uh, they had the farmer's merchant bank there, and it was becoming a very important trading center. So it was vital for people to be able to get across uh, the river at that time. Uh, local ranchers complained to the local elected officials, but nothing happened. In 1909, the citizens of Satakoy got a petition together and gave it to their elected officials, but still nothing was done, no, more delays and more delays. And then in 1910, uh, the citizens passed uh, a bond raising $225,000. And incredibly, most of that money went to the construction of the bridge. Uh, so in 1911, they finally finished the bridge, and they were going to have a grand opening, a grand celebration, but it had to be postponed because it rained and it flooded so bad, it had to be postponed for a week. <laughs> oh, the irony. I'd like to present to you the history of the Satakoy Bridge. Excellent. Let's see it. In early days, 120 or 140 years ago, people used to come by what they called lighters. They were rowed ashore from sailboats. And then in 1873, Ventura and, the, and Port Wainimi built piers like this. People were able to get into the county. But once they got ashore, you had dirt roads, you had wagon roads or paths or trails, whatever you might say. There were no roads. And can you visualize this county with no bridges? No bridges at all. And so in our rainy season, during the winter, the various towns were isolated. And it meant, an a it meant an end to the baseball season, not because the fields were wet, but because the rivers had risen and people could not drive their wagons and buggies to the various towns for, for their ball games. Now, Satakoy by this time had become quite a trading center. And people from the Las Posas and what we now call the Oxnard Plain would, came, would come to Satakoy for their blacksmith work, for the, for the pharmacy, to get a haircut, get their harness repaired, and here's their post office, right? And down to all of this in downtown Satakoy, but still no bridge, no way of getting here from the south side of Santa Clara River. Here is a farmer's co-op store being put up by the local farmers. So this was an important trading center. I want you to keep that in mind. And two new farm products are being produced here. One lima beans and one walnuts. Here's the first walnut house. It's constructed and this is their first carload of walnuts to go out. And the trains came through 1888. But everything at this time was being carried, towed, pulled by teams of horses. You see them going right up through. This is on the corner of Wells and Telephone. They're hauling hay using teams. Here's an old boiler for a bean thrasher, one of um, Walter Duvall's uh, rigs. 
And here we have the location of one of the early crossing points in the river, just below where the present-day bridge is. They called them Fords. There's also one down by Satikoy Avenue. And here we have a picture of one of the first Protestant churches in Ventura County that was located right here in Satikoy. And people from the south part of the river had no way of getting here during the uh, rainy seasons when travel across the river was impossible without a bridge. And here is the Farmers and Merchants Bank. People needed to do business with a bank. They borrowed money to plant their crops, and that's the way it was done. As we begin to see automobiles appearing on the roads around Ventura County, it was decided that there was a definite need to have roads maintained in a much usable fashion. Up until this time, farmers took care of the roads that were adjoining their property. They kept them graded. In the wet winters, they would put bean straw on them so folks wouldn't lose traction. And the county finally began to take them over. And they had big sprinkling uh, wagons that kept the dust down in the hot summer and fall months. But there were still no bridges. And around 19... Seven and eight, we began to hear rumblings from the taxpayers around the county that it was time that our roads were improved and that bridges be placed across rivers at various towns. And Satikoy in 1909 got up a petition for a bridge. The county wanted to do this, but they did delay. Incidentally, the speed limit in the city of Ventura at that time was 10 miles an hour. But in 1910, they passed a bond issue for $225,000. $225,000. And in that, there was a bridge approved to cross at Satikoy. 11 span railroad bridge and in June in 1911 the work began on April 12th 1912 the bridge opening celebration had to be postponed due to heavy rains but the following week the party was on headlines from the Ventura Free Press at that April of 1912 Satikoy Bridge receives baptism with goodwill of thousands greatest gathering in the history of the county Promptly at the opening of the morning session, the automobiles lined up for the parade which led across the new bridge, and it was headed by La Monica's band of 18 pieces. And as it passed the various points and crowds of spectators cheered it wildly, it is estimated that 250 automobiles were on the ground. Between four and 5,000 people gathered at Satikoy today to aid in the dedication of the new bridge, which had been thrown across the Santa Clara River at that point. And by 10 o'clock in the forenoon, fully 2,000 appeared on the scene, every train bringing record loads from all sections of the county. And the roads leading to Satikoy from all points of the compass were crowded with automobiles and vehicles right up to the noon hour. It was at noon when Big Chief Wasson announced that the meet was ready, that the greatest crowd was present. The place was fairly teeming with humanity. But the Santa Clara River drainage basin was in for another wet winter. In 1914, the southern approach of the bridge was demolished, washed out again. But this was replaced, and we had our bridge back in operation up until 1938, when the floods came back. It was time for a new bridge, or at least a portion of a new bridge. Soon after the 1938 flood, a contract was let to replace the missing spans with 11 70-foot reinforced concrete girder spans. There was to be a wider roadway of 26 feet between the curbs. Floodwaters washed out the detour during the reconstruction work on the bridge in 1939. 
Those were wet years. The new concrete section would require a grade change from the old steel through truss bands. And looking here at this picture, right over the backs of that Harigi sheep flock, you can see where the road in the distance inclines up to the new concrete span. The new southwest approach to the bridge was washed out here in the flood of February 1944. Another one of those wet winters. Now the narrow width of the original bridge of 18 and a half feet was adequate for wagons and early trucks. But with the increased use of the bridge by heavily laden modern trucks, considerable damage was done and was a constant headache to the highway maintenance department. World War II made any plans to rebuild the bridge impossible. So a substitute program to replace the timber deck and resurfacing was done. And during all of this time, a detour was used through the riverbed, and it didn't take much of a rain to close things down. It was decided a new bridge was to be built, and in April of 1956, bids were opened for the construction of 23 precast, pre-stressed concrete girder spans and it included a new detour through the river. Total cost, $607,000. The use of this type of construction was new in the United States. So we called on a retired engineer who was in charge of the casting of the pre-stressed girders. And we're shown here visiting with Ralph Leon, a graduate of Fillmore High School and is a graduate of the University of Southern California School of Engineering. And we are standing in almost the very spot where the girders were cast. Following the curing process, cranes hoisted these girders into place. The following film that you're going to see was taken by George McCartney. This is 1969 with his little old Super 8 camera. And here we are, Santa Clara River Bridge. And this was a wet wet January 1969. You'll notice how muddy that water is and how much debris, trees and logs and things floating down there. There had been a big fire from Fillmore. It actually had come clear out South Mountain and down to Lloyd Butler's Hill there, even to the back of Ventura. Our watershed took a beating. January, although the years the season's rainfall was very low. It happened all in two months. In January is left Ventura County wet. And then here came another storm in February, and look what happened to our bridge. This is the northern approach there. And look at the snow there, our snow-capped peaks, twin peaks there over Fillmore. And not only did we lose a bridge, but all this muddy water and debris went up right on down the mouth of the Santa Clara River, jumped a little dike they had down at the Ventura Marina, filled it up, took a lot of logs and boats right out to sea with it. Farmers upstream would plant their orchards pretty close to the river and as a result they lost a little acreage there and some trees, lemons and oranges. We're, we're visiting today with Ralph Leon. Ralph spent many years with the Caltrans of Cal uh, State, yeah, our, our yeah. good state here. Yeah. Ralph, it's good that you could be here. Where's your being here? Okay, Ralph, we're standing here at a brand new bridge, and it's going to be dedicated July 30th, 1994. Kind of proud of the fact that you've uh, worked for Caltrans. You were oh, not yes. a part of this, but you were no. part of the other bridges. That's correct. Yeah, uh, yeah this is a beautiful bridge right here. And uh, looking at the structure, I probably say it lasted a long time uh, since we have to deepen the footings in the structure here and uh, keep it from uh, undermining the, uh, the footings. Yeah. Right. You spent a lot of time in this. On this very bridge, right? Yes, I have. Or the, the one just previous to this one. Right. Right. 
What do you remember most about it? Well, basically in 1956, we substituted the uh, Casting, pre-stressing, of course, and erecting the girders out here in that bridge in 1957. Now, about where would that have taken place, this pre-casting? Well, the pre-casting was on the uh, upstream side of the bridge. And, uh, look at this way, up, uh, I would call it the, uh, the, the east side. The, the, yeah. The east well, side that's... of the bridge and the upstream side. Yeah, and, and we're all we're pretty close to that, right? That's, that's correct. Okay. Can you tell us, kind of briefly, exactly what you mean by a pre-stressed girder and how you made it? Well, the pre-stressed girders, of course, were basically, well, this ones that were done here in the, in the uh, field. They were cast, they were forms were placed, the pre-stressed steel was placed in the girders, the uh, concrete was placed in there after the concrete had obtained a certain amount of strength, the uh, girders were pre-stressed, and, and of course, that gave the uh, strength. And those are, how long were those? Those are, well, I would say 70 feet long. Call them 70 feet. And okay. how many did you make? 184. 184? Oh, yeah, that's right. And then you, they were moved from here to the bridge. That's correct. And how, how did that, how was that? Done? Well, that was performed by cranes. Big cranes. Big cranes, oh, right. two 70 ton cranes. And there they were. Ralph, looking at this, and this is called a pier, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's a pier. I, got, I know yeah, one. Yeah, though. it's a waterway, so it's a pier. <laughs> Approximately how deep will that go? Well, that probably goes down there another 40 feet there. Uh, we probably we have piling there, steel piling below that, and then a footing, which is probably about eight foot uh, thick, six to eight foot thick. And then the column comes from there and, ex and extends out about another 30 feet from that footing. And of course, it goes from here up to the superstructure. And actually, there's as much up above there is down below in height. That's correct. In right. height and depth. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, what do we what do we see here? This there's a cross member. I'm sorry. There's a cross member there. What is that? Uh, that's a pier cap. Uh, that's where the girders are supported and uh, all that provides the uh, bearing for those girders. Now, have there been any changes made in that since our big earthquake? Oh, it sure has. They used those uh, bearing, uh, those caps used to be about 30 inches wide. Now they're at a minimum of uh, five feet. Five feet. In order to carry any horizontal movement that might occur, so it won't drop down. And and what do we see here running? Uh, well, underneath the uh, deck there, you see several uh, utilities through there. We see uh, green uh, pipe, probably be 16 to 20 inches in diameter. And that, Probably a gas line because yeah. green uh, is for gas. You also see uh, telephone conduits in there. There's a series of uh, ducts that go through there. And also, apparently, there must be some uh, Edison wires going through there. And there's a couple of six inch conduits going through there. Yeah. Now, what do, you, what do you call these? Uh, I call them stringers. What are those stringers that go there? Are well, those. those... Uh, could we call a stringer, however, we call them girders. Girders, you call yeah. them girders. Right. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen? That's, That's correct. Is that, that okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. How long do you think uh, this yeah, bridge this, is going to last? Well, it should last for a long time. Uh, concrete uh, will last for a hundred years if no uh, earthquake or uh, Mother Nature. Mother Nature good. takes care of it. Yeah. Other than that, it, it'll last for a long time, probably 100 years. Ralph, I've been looking over this new bridge and I see a crack up there. What is that? Oh, that, that crack you see over there is an expansion joint. And uh, we provide expansion joints probably every two to 400 feet on the structure because it's, uh, the structure is affected by the uh, heat, the thermal the expansion. Yeah, yeah. Expansion and contraction. So we have to provide the expansion joints so that we don't have a real wide opening. Yeah. In the, in the structure. I have another one. Well, there's this, this doesn't have a joint. What's well, wrong? What's here? Yeah, that this particular construction right here is a what do you call a structure that's a uh, continuity over the pier. And of course, that, what that does is remove uh, lessen some of the uh, stresses in the, in the, the structure and, and make makes it more even between the girders, uh, the stress, the tension, and compression on the girders. 
you have a, I think you call it a cap. Yeah, is there's a, a cap. The yeah. cap is a support over the piers to uh, provide the bearing uh, for the girders. Yeah. And uh, since the earthquake of 71, they have made it a uh, minimum of five feet uh, on that cap. Yeah. And that's so that the girders might not pull off of the, uh, of the cap. I know what it was. It was a fixity. What's a fixity? Well, the fixity is just the fact that uh, you make it continuous over the pier, so that what happens is that the pier will take also take tension on top, uh, or the girder will take tension on top of the girder, and lessen the moments in the middle of the span. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I have this is not maybe a technical question, but before this bridge, on the previous bridge, let's put it. I found that it was smooth riding over there the first three, four, five spans. But when you came down here, I didn't know it was going to make it to the end. There was a lot of bumping and bouncing. Now, well, explain that, please. What happens here is most of the uh, spans you were talking about over there at the, uh, I call it southerly end of the bridge, are conventionally reinforced concrete. Okay. And conventionally reinforced concrete has a lot of dead weight on it. And it's more, it doesn't flex as much as a pre-stressed uh, structure. No a give. No, the pre-stressed structure, your tension is at the bottom of the girder, your neutral is at the bottom of the girder, and the concrete above that steel is all in, ten in compression. However, in a conventional uh, reinforced concrete girder, the neutral axis is about two-thirds up from the bottom of the girder, and that is all that way. And so that makes uh, those those particular types of girders a lot. Uh, they're not as flexible as the pre-stress girders. Uh, yeah. I was I was perfectly safe then all this time. <laughs> oh right? yeah, yes you were. A pre-stress girder works more like a steel uh, girder bridge. And if you've been on a steel girder bridge, you can feel them. You flex can feel them flop around. Yeah, and right. Rattle and everything. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay, it's been fun. Oh sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ralph. Don't Thank forget, you, we're going to see you in that parade. That's true. That's correct. Okay. <laughs> a great day. Yeah. Wow. About uh, 82 years ago, they had another big one. Well, this, and this is the first one since then. And a young man around here that we'll talk to later has done himself up just great. Jack, you look great in your busted ankle. All right. Our ceremonies start this morning with the Chumash Indians doing their blessing of this whole event. How do you do? My name is Red Star, and this is my cousin Gregory. And we're the Indians from Satikoy, the Chumash. The last gathering that this many Chumash showed up was in 1864, right here, the last gathering of all the Chumash people 
that was known as the traditionals of those days. I'm very proud to be able to address you today and to do this blessing today. So you'll see a little bit of history and, uh, and I hope you have a wonderful time. It's really nice to see all you different people here today. introduce our Grand Marshal. Brigham Manufacturing, longest family-owned business in town. Don Brigham started sweeping floors there when he was 14 years old. At the age of 21, he ran the place. Unfortunately, his father had died. Donnie took over. Donnie, please stand up. And I'd like his wife, Barbara, charming Barbara, to stand too. A great couple. Thank you very much. I would like to introduce the director. Of, oh boy, see if I get this right. The director from District 7, Department of Transportation, State of California, Caltrans, Jerry Baxter. Thank you, Bill. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be here to help celebrate the completion of the new Santa Coy Bridge and the new and improved Highway 118. Please welcome Senator Kathy Wright. Thank you so much. I'm so pleased to be here, part of my district. I've driven this corner and around so many times going through here and I always wish that it would be different, and now it's tremendous that it is. At least you have your shopping center without all the traffic going through it, so hopefully that will help your community. Congratulations, this is a very good day. Even the weather compensated for us, they said, and probably was because of the, the Shumash Indians. I, I bet you did a dance last night just to have the weather as beautiful as today. Thank you so much, I'm very pleased to be here. And I'd like to give a certificate of appreciation and recognition for the opening, the grand opening, of the new Santa Coy Bridge. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, Assemblyman Jack O'Connell. Thank you very much, Jerry. Uh, Jerry. I haven't lobbied Jerry on another project in at least about uh, 20 minutes now. So it's, uh, well, we finally made it. It's, I can remember so many years uh, coming through, uh, growing up in Oxnard and making the Dog Lake here. And I'm uh, just so happy. This is really a proud moment, I know, for uh, all of Satikoy and all of Ventura County. It has a lot of history, this little community of Satikoy. I wish to congratulate each one of you because of the widening and the provision of the bridge. These, the bridge was cost $13 million. The widening took place, it cost about $9 million. These are all part of your tax money that went into these two wonderful improvement projects. 